the cloud. So target is to cover to the logistic regression and probit regression. Probit regression. And I'm not sure whether I can cover both of these. If not, then I will cover the remaining part in next class and the class will be shorter. Next class could be. Okay. Logistic regression is a very important regression. Okay. This logistic regression will be used when your response variable, when your response variable, response variable is categorical, is categorical, okay? When response variable is categorical, so that means it has two levels, zero and then one. So zero means no, that means no occurrence and yes means yes, that means occurrences o double c u r occurrences occurrences there is only one r <clears throat> okay so now i have to give you some background why logistic regression is needed why simple and multiple regression is not allowed so simple and multiple regression in last classes that you have learned our response variable y our response variable y is a continuous, right? Continuous. But in logistic equation, our response variable is categorical zero and one. Okay. So logistic regression, are you okay? Understanding? Okay. So logistic regression is similar to the linear regression, except that it has a categorical response okay it has a categorical response now where the logistic regression is used in order to predict the probability that the person has the disease the person does not have a disease understand in order to predict the probability this is one this is called the let me write it so that you can understand this is called explanatory task and predictive task. So logistic regression is used. Logistic regression is used for explanatory task. Explanatory task known as the profiling and also predicting also prediction task prediction task that is also known as the classification Classy. Let me stand. Let me spend few minutes in here. Logistic regression in used is used for explanatory task. Explanatory task mean in this classroom. In this classroom, suppose we have a high blood pressure and low blood pressure, right? Mm -hmm. High blood pressure. High blood pressure means one, and no blood pressure means zero. Understand? Now, explanatory task means what? Are you seeing explanatory task? Logistic regression is used for the explanatory task and prediction task. Explanatory task means what? I want to explain like high blood pressure in terms of age, height, weight, body mass index, race. That is called the explanatory task. Understand? Like covariate effects we want to see. Understand? Covariate effects we want to see. 
that is called the explanatory task and other other is prediction task or classification prediction task means i want to predict the probability of falling in the high blood pressure group understand one i am seeing covariate effect on the blood pressure whether height is high blood pressure is high weight is high blood pressure is high that is called the explanatory task like covariate explain the dependent variable understand that is called the explanatory task see i am spending quite a bit of time so that you can understand logistic regression is used for the explanatory task so that means we want to see the covariate effect on the response variable response variable is what blood pressure high blood pressure or normal pressure right so high blood pressure i can put here y equal to suppose this is the first second third up to 100 persons i can take so y is a response variable this is one high blood pressure high blood pressure 0 0 1 0 0 this is what y okay one means high blood pressure zero means no blood pressure high no not high blood pressure clear now there is a age variable there is a height variable there is a weight variable okay there is a race variable i want to see the covariate effect of this explanatory task on that that is what the explanatory task is and predictive task or prediction task is what that so you understand explanatory task and predictive task is what predictive task means i want to predict with probability so take a look at that 0.5 right my if predictive probability is greater than 0.5 then i can say that high blood pressure if predictive probability is less than 0.5 i say that no blood pressure understand so i want to predict because probability lies between 0 and 1 i will give you a real life example don't worry but now the background is what the background is that we use logistic regression for two tasks explanatory task and predictive task predictive task means what predictive we want to predict the probability whether the person has a high blood pressure if that probability is greater than 0.5 that means it close to 1 if that probability is less than 0.5 that means that probability close to 0 clear right so that is the main task of the logistic regression okay now the task so i discuss two things now remember there are few things that i need to mention before going there there are few need uh, things i need to mention what is odds okay odds suppose there are 100 persons okay 30 is smoker 70 is non smokers okay so odds of smoker odds of smoker equal to what odds of smoker equal to 30 over 70 okay this is the definition odds of smoker clear odds of non smoker Equal to what seventy over 
30. Clear, right? Right? Yes. This is called. So we can say that it is less than 1, right? So that among 100 persons, 100 people, less than 1 means what? The number of smoker is less than the num number of non-smoker, right? But on the other hand, this is higher, right? So I can say that number of non-smoker is higher than the number of smoker. Clear, right? Smoker. So this is called the odds. Odds can be explained in terms of probability. Odds. How? Probability of smoker. Probability of smoker divided by probability of non-smoker. Non-smoker. Okay? So probability of smoker equal to what? 30 over 100. Probability of non-smoker equal to 70 over 100. Right? Clear? So this could be written as probability of smoker. This could be written as probability of non-smoker. Right? Clear, right? Clear. So why? Because this is equal to 30 over 100 and that is equal to 1 minus 30 over 100. So if you write like this way, then you will end up with 30 over 100 divided by 70 over 100. So you will end up with 30 over 70. This is what odds of smoker, right? So odds can be written as the probability of happening of an event divided by probability of not happening that event, right? Clear. Okay. Your final exam will be conceptual, okay? Now, what is odds ratio? Odds ratio. Okay? Odds ratio. So, in the population, suppose there are 50 women and 15 of them are smoker. Okay? There are 70 men and uh, 17 of them are smoker, right? Right? Now, odd ratio. So, odd ratio of smoker Okay, take a look what I am doing in here. Here is the women. So, there are 15 over 35, right? Women odds divided by men odds, 17 over 53, right? This is the odds smoker for the man. This is the odds smoker for the women. So, this is written as odds ratio of women smoker. Understand, odds ratio of women smokers. Are you understanding? So, when you do the model fitting and in the homeworks that I have given the explanations, I have asked you explain your parameters in terms of odds or odds ratio. Okay? I will maybe one or two homework I will do liberally, but other homework I will grade very strictly. You understand? Today's class is very important because if you find a job in the industry, most of the cases you will be asked, we want to conduct a campaign 
in order to increase our subscriber. Understand? How can you do that? So previously no subscriber, you want to do the subscriber. Yes and no. And then you want to do the marketing campaign. That means you will send a mail to each of the person. How many people in USA? 330 million, right? You want to increase your business. Suppose you want to send 1 million. So if one letter cost $1, how much money you are spending? $1 million, right? Right? In order to send the $1 million, so you want to increase your business, and America has 330 million people. 330 million people you have to reach by mail. In order to send a mail, postal expenses is 60 cents. Print out. And all the people work there. If you sum it up, it will be two, three dollar, right? So that means you want to target one million people. For one million people, for expenses is three million, right? So now, are you going to send the mail randomly? No, you have some data already. You either collect data from credit card companies. Give me the credit card information of this. And then you said that, well, so we got 50 million people's informations, okay? And now 50 million people informations, let's see last year, how much money they spent. You said that, well, these people spent $40, $40,000, $30,000, $60,000. Then you target those people. Then you send. How can you do that? You have to do this by using logistic equipment. And I'm going to show you an example. In real life, there is a lot, lot, lot of applications of this. So now you understand what? You understand what is odds, what is odds ratio, okay? So now, suppose this is a true, and this is prediction, okay? So true is zero and one, prediction is zero, one, one. Clear? So, suppose there is 30 and there is 20. So, this is total. And suppose there is, um, there is suppose 20 and there is 40. So, it is here 60, there is 50, there is 50, there is 60. Clear? There was no disease. How many people? 50 people has no disease, right? No disease, right? How many correctly identified? 30, right? Are you understanding? And how many misclassified? 20. Are you understanding? So this is called the true negative. True negative. How many has the how many has the disease and how many correctly predict 40, right? There are 60 person. 40 person has 60 person has the disease. 40 of them correctly predicted. So this is called the true positive, right? Are you understanding? This is called the False negative, right? This is, this is, these 20 persons does not have a disease, right? But predictions found them as a disease, right? So this is called the false positive, right? Are you understanding? And this is called, this is called, False negative, right? Negative, right? Are you okay? Again, okay. I will show an example, real life example by running the code. Suppose you have all together how? 110 people, right in here? 110 people, among these 110 people, 50 people, this is true result. 
This is true. This prediction is I'm making from logistic regressions, which I'm going to show you how. So this is the true result. 50% does not have a disease or condition. 60% has a condition. So now I want to predict these things. After doing prediction zero and one, I correctly identify that 30% does not have a disease and also prediction also found 30%. So this 20% E does not have a disease, but predictions make an error. Okay, so this is known as the false positive or misclassification. This part is known as the misclassification. This part is known as the misclassification. This part is known as the correct classification. Person has a disease, we predict that the person has a disease. Person does not have a disease, we predict that person does not have a disease. Okay. Okay. So you understand what is now um, that is also known as the uh, if there is a there is a disease and correctly identified that that is known as the sensitivity. That is known as what did I write? Sensitivity. Yeah, sensitivity. True positive. That is a true positive. That is a true positive. This is known also as the sensitivity. Sen, C, T, B, T, or true positive rate. True positive rate. That, okay, this one is known as the specificity, which is called the true negative. This is known as the specificity. Okay. So in your exam, if I give you an example like this and ask you to compute these things, remember this. Okay. This is also known as the true negative rate. So after, as our response variable is zero and one, we will make prediction. And from the original data, we want to make a confusion matrix like this. And we want to say how efficiently our model does the classification. So regression, this logistic regression does what? Two things, explanatory, that means explaining response variable with response to explanatory variable and also prediction or classification, whether we can correctly do the classification. Clear? Okay. Now, this line is very important. So you remember the simple regression, multiple regressions, I come here, write equation beta zero plus beta one x i and say that this is the equation of a linear linear equation or our straight line equations defined by um, archimedes and uh, what is the mathematician guy why did i forget his name uh, the geometry geometry geometric guy well, 2000 years or way earlier than they defined these things. And then I said that these equations, they just added this. Okay. So now my question is, how can I first write a mathematical equation for the logistic regression? Are you understanding? When I teach you simple and multiple regression, I said that this is the linear equation. Okay defined by a mathematicians before Christ. Okay, Euclid, Euclid, why did you click? Okay, way earlier, 200 before Christ, they have developed these things. And on that equation, just this arrow term is added and Galton said is 1805, it is a linear equation. Now my question is, 
what will be the equation for the logistic regression? Understand? Understand? Now, in order to understand that, I have to write a sentence. So the predictions are related, the predictors. So the predictor, this means this, are related, predictors are related to the response y via a nonlinear function called logit called logit okay You could forget me, that's okay, but please do not forget these things. <laughs> you understand? Down the road, you might have a question in your head. Simple multiple regression, I understand. Euclid defined linear equations and Galton added error term in there. So that is understandable. But what will be the mathematical formula for logics, logistic regression, okay? So remember this sentence, now I am going to write it. So let me see, what is this? What is this? Odds, right? Yeah. It's odds, right? They put here log of odds that is what known as the logit of p okay log of odds logit of p and then they defined it as a z equal to b0 plus b1 x1 b2 x2 plus bk xk they define this in this format that is the starting point so zero and one right happening and not happening right zero and one smoker non-smoker right that could be expressed as a odds. So logistic regression model this in this format. Instead of directly using 0, 1, 0, 1, they are modeling it in this format. Are you understanding? Okay. The purpose is to predict this. I will, I will discuss these things gradually. Now, take a look at that. From there, I can easily write p over 1 minus p equal to e to the power z, right? Now, if you do the multiplication, p to the power z minus p e to the power z. Now, if I take here p as a common, then we have 1 plus e to the power z equal to e z, okay? Now, if I want to find the p, then we have e to the power z, 1 plus e to the power z. From there, we can now consider in here P equal to 1 over 1 plus e to the power minus Z. <clears throat> P equal to what? Probability of smoker, right? Divided by probability of non-smoker, which is equal to 1 minus P. But my P is the probability of a smoker and that is probability of non-smoker. So I have expressed P as like this. Are you seeing P? Didn't you remember I told you logistic regression tasks are two things, predicting probability? Understand? So now my purpose is to estimate this Z. How can I estimate this Z? If I have X1, X2, X3, everything is in my hand. But beta 0, beta 1, beta 2, beta k, if I estimate these things, 
and then if I take a set of x1, x2, x3 value, if the beta 0, beta 1, beta k values are estimated, plug in there, I got the z, and then if I plug the z value in there, then I got the probability. Then I can say that x1 equal to a is, if the person a is 40, x2 equal to income, if person income is 100,000, x3 equal to expenses, person expenses is 55,000. If I plug all of these things, and then I will get a probability in there. If that probability is greater than 0.5, I said target this guy. The persons who have these characteristics, we will send mail only to these guys. Are you understanding? I'm taking time and speaking very slowly so that you can understand the basic. Remember, logistic equation has tons of views in the industry. They want to make profit. They want to make profit. A lot of biomedical applications, lot of disease, no disease. Okay? Bankruptcy, non-bankruptcy. Bankruptcy one, non-bankruptcy zero. Okay? So you understand, right? So remember these things. Now you could ask me, hey, Professor, why is it 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1? These things here, I do not see in here. How can you estimate these things? Just be patient. We are going to do that. Okay? Let's see, before starting that things, if I can explain something more. So odds, odds issue, sensitivity, specificity, is, everything is mentioned. Now let me write two more sentences. Then I will go for mathematical derivations so that I can convince you. And then I will run R code. And from there, I will do some uh, predictions. Okay. So logistic equation approach, <clears throat> write these things. Logistic regression approach has been developed to enable us to use regression models to model the probability of a particular category. Particular category of a response variable response variable for a given set of for a given set of explanatory variable. Goal find a function of the predictor that relates them to a zero, one, 
outcome. Okay. In a state of Y, this is what down the road you might have a question. So these writings will give the answer. In a state of Y, as a outcome variable, like in linear regression we use a function of y function of y called logit called logit logit can be modeled as a linear function of predictor Logic can be modeled as a linear function of predictor. The logit can be mapped back to a probability. The logit can be mapped back to a probability which in turn can be mapped to a class. So when there will be output, I will explain this thing. Okay. So let me start some discussions now. How? Logis logistic regressions will mathematically derive. Okay. Now I want to know a famous thing. Newton. Epson. So your name is Adibayo, right? Or what is the name? Chinedu. Oh, Chinedu, Chinedu. Forgot. I, I forgot this. So you are doing support vector machine homework. Understand? Those of you are taking uh, 500 with me. How many of you are taking 500 with me? You are taking 500. Both of you. You are. Are you taking 500 with me? Just two of you. Okay. So you have to do support vector machine homework. Okay. This homework you are going to do in 500. So I'm teaching three courses, okay? 480, 500, and 435. Three graduate course teaching is so difficult, okay? <laughs> Lot of models I'm covering, and then grading all of these things is exhausting my life. <laughs> you understand? And when you see the grading, you see that, right? Each student, I grade all of these things. So as, because down the road, this guy said that, well, 50% uh, material that was taught in DS-435 was also taught in 500. So I give a 50% of my tuition is wasted. <laughs> down the road, uh, 10 years later, maybe in the day of judgment, he can hold me accountable before God. 
He said that, well, the, in, the, in the planet, you took my tuitions, now give me some good leaves from you. <laughs> okay? So that's the reason I have to put something, different materials for them. And take a look at preparing those things, reading, material uploading, and make, it take a lot of time. Understand? So what is newton Epson method says? newton Epson method says, suppose you have a function like this, x to the power 5, 2x to the power 4 minus 1000. Okay? What is the value of x so that I can solve this equation? Understand? Suppose you have the equation log of 10x e to the power minus 5x plus sin x. Okay? Which is the function of fx. Okay? which is equal to zero. What value of x satisfy this? Are you understanding? What value of x I should put there so that I can get the solution? I have an equation like 10 to the power uh, 10 x to the power 7 3x plus 2 equal to zero. What value of x satisfy these equations? Okay, so Newton Epson said that under two conditions, number one, number two, if the fx, fx is continuous, you know what, what is a continuous function? A function is said to be continuous if fx minus fy, their difference is very small, and then x minus y, their difference is also very small. These two condition satisfied, then that function is said to be continuous function. Graphically, this is a continuous function. This is a continuous function. This is a continuous function, graphically. Understand? On the other end, if you have a function like this, if you plug here x, if you plug here fx, you have function like this, and then like this, and then like this. So that means in here and here, they are not connected. This is called the continuous, fun the discontinuous function. Okay? The newton Epson method says any function, if that is continuous and differentiable, differentiable, okay? Any function that is continuous and differentiable, the solution of x, approximate solution of fx, approximate solution, approximate solution at point. x equal to x0 is obtained x1 equal to x0 minus f of x0 divided by f of x0 prime. This is the solution. This is mathematically proved by the Newton and Repsons almost more than 400 years ago. Okay. When, when was Newton born? Let me see. Is this 400? 615. 615? 15, Isaac Newton. 643. 17, 18, 19, 20. Almost 400 years, okay? They said that any function, if they satisfy this condition, the solution is that, okay? So solution is that means what? This is your initial guess. You will start the initial point and then you subtract functional value from its fast derivative value. And you will continue this until you get the solution. 
Understand? You will continue this until you get the solution. Okay. Now, he said that, so first one, he said like this, first approximation is this, approximation is coming x0 minus f of x0 divided by f of x0 prime derivative. Then it will continue to the second one, x2 equal to x1 minus f of x1 divided by f prime of x1. And then you will continue these things, then you will get f of x n plus one equal to x of n minus, you can put here like, like, like this, like this, you can put here like this, f of x n and then f prime of x n. How? See, very simple, Geometric equations they have used, they come up with these solutions. It has lot, lot, a lot of application. Logistic regression, Poisson regression, negative binomial regression, Tobit regression, Cox regressions, many financial models. When there is not a closed form solutions, when there is not an analytical solution, mathematical analytical solution, Closed form solution does not exist. We have to use this. Okay. So, two line proof equation of a tangent, equation of a tangent y x n x minus xn plus f of xn. This is the equation of a <clears throat> tangent. So now if I want to explain those things in graphically, I have to write like this. Suppose I have this, okay? And that is the So this is the point, okay, IR, the original value is x n comma zero. This is my effect. This is my x, okay. So in this case, this is the, this is the equation, okay. This is the equation which we want to continuous and differentiable equations and I want to have a solution for that. That means root of that equations. So this is the line where x is below x n comma one. And this is the line. That is the line where this value is x n plus one comma one. So this is what? And this height, this height is known as the f of x n, which has been used in there. This is the f of x n. These things is in here. And this is the place tangent, so our slope, this is, which has a formula, slope equal to f prime x n. This is the slope, okay? Now I want to do what? I want to put here plug y equal to zero. This in this case y equal to zero, right? In the, this is equal in this case y equal to zero, right? So I plug y equal to zero. Then what I will get? I got here zero, and this is f prime x, uh, and this is the equation of a tangent, okay? And then here in x I want to plug there. When you plug y equal to zero, then x equal to what you are go you, you are going to plot, you have to plug there x n plus one minus x n plus f of x n. 
take a look at that y equal to zero if you plug in there this is a tangent in this line in this line tangent equal to you put here zero y equal to zero then this is what you have from there if you do some mathematical manipulations you will get your result like this x and plus one equal to x and minus f of x n divided by f prime x n this is what we got just that simple okay so now if i want to give you an example suppose i want to solve this equation fx equal to x square minus 4x minus 7. Then I have to find the f prime x, which is equal to twice x minus 4. Now start with 0. Start with x0 equal to 5. I want to solve this equation. So if I plug x 0 equal to 5, then first approximation is this is 5. The x 0 minus f prime. Right? So now if I plug here 5 minus, if I plug here this x 0 equal to 5. And then if I plug that, that value in here and as well as in here, then we get f prime x equal to 10 minus 4 equal to 6. And then here I got uh, 5, 25 minus 20, uh, 20 uh, 25 minus 20. So I have 5. So I got here again 2. Okay. So if, if we do some manipulations, then what we are getting? 5.3333. Now again, if I do these things in the second iterations by using same formula by plugging this, I got 5.31. If I do this third iterations, then I got 5.31662. And if we do is fourth iterations, then we will get 5.31, 5.31662, okay? Only limitation, only limitation or problem or problem of Newton Repson method is initial gas initial so it is a very simple equation x square minus 4x minus 7 right if i initial gas suppose instead of x is equal to 5 initial gas if i start here with the 500000 or maybe negative point zero 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 one then it will be a problem. So Newton Repson method has only one problem. The problem is if your initial guess is very bad, then your result might not converse. You might not get the root of the equation or solution of the equation, understand? Okay. After doing that, now let me directly go to the mathematical derivations. After mathematical derivations, then I will go R and I will show the real life example. After real life example, then I will show you, discuss the homeworks thing and how to solve the homeworks. Okay. Mathematical derivations.
mathematical derivations. <clears throat> Remember, I clearly derived in previous space P equal to one over one plus e to the power minus z. You remember that, right? P equal to that, okay? Now let me write it very simple way. Instead of P, let me write phi of xi, okay? Instead of phi, I want to write it phi of xi. One plus e to the power minus beta zero plus beta one x one, okay? I just want to write it like that simple. If I put here I, then it could be written as e to the power beta zero plus beta one x i, and then one plus e to the power beta zero plus beta one x i, okay? This is negative sign. If I write it one over this, and then do the multiplications taking up, I will end up with this, okay? I will end up with this. This is a simple mathematics. Now I want to consider in here, yi. Our yi was what? Y is 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 1, yi like this, right? yi, disease, no disease. Bankruptcy, non-bankruptcy, right? Why I or why I like like this? Okay. So now suppose suppose why I follow the Bernoulli distributions. With parameter phi x i. Remember, this is equal to p. This is equal to p. This is actually coming like that. This is equal to p. So it has a Bernoulli distributions with parameter this. Okay. So now I want to find like joint probability distributions function y1, y2, y, n, which could be obtained by running this. I goes one to n phi x i to the power y i even one minus phi x i then one minus y i. In statistics, there is a distribution known as the Bernoulli distributions. Bar, no, only distribution. Bad Bernoulli distribution is just for two observations. Probability of x equal to x could be written as probability of x, one minus probability of one minus x. This x can take value only zero and one, okay? This is called the Bernoulli distributions. If you plug here, if you plug here x equal to zero, that means you are getting failure. One minus p, right? If you plug x equal to one, that means success. That means you are getting p, right? In statistics, there is a distribution known as the Bernoulli distributions. It has a lot of lot of applications. That probability model Bernoulli distributions is copied and applied in here because our response variable y takes only zero and one. And these Bernoulli distributions is appropriate only for the zero and one. Are you understanding? Mm -hmm. Question? You have question? You are understanding? You are good, okay. So this is the Bernoulli distribution. This is the Bernoulli probability distributions where X takes only zero and one. When X equal to zero, no disease. If you plug at zero, then it is equal to one, it is one minus P. When X equal to one, there is a disease. So that means this is no disease will be one and then this is equal to P, okay? So this idea has been written in there, okay? Now, if I want to write here phi x i divided by 
1 minus phi x i if this could be written then what i have i i would have in here e to the power beta 0 plus beta 1 x i divided by 1 plus e to the power beta 0 plus beta 1 x i 1 minus e to the power beta 0 plus beta 1 x i divided by 1 plus e to the power beta 0 plus beta 1 x i. Okay. So now in this case, if we canceled out, then what we have, we have just e to the power beta 0 plus beta 1 x i because this cancelled out this entire thing will cancel out with this and when this will go in there this will be cancelled out so this is what we have so now what we can do from previous line from the previous line, that means from this line, what I can do in here, from there I can do pi goes n, i goes 1 to n, and then in this case, in this case, I can plug the value, I can plug the value phi x i. Um, let me see. Okay. Um, okay. So now one minus phi x i to the power y i. I'm going to explain these things to you and then one minus phi <laughs> x i. Okay. Take a look at this one. Take a look at this one if you have are struggling this or this thing. So this part has a negative y, that negative y coming in there. Are you saying this part is that one? So this part, let me take a different color. This part equal to that part, okay? And that part, that part, equal to this part. Okay. And then I have one remaining, that one is in here. One remaining, that one is in there. So now these things could be written as phi n i goes 1 to n and this could be written as e to the power beta 0 plus beta 1 x i and this could be written as y i 1 minus e to the power beta 0 plus beta 1 x i 1 plus e to the power beta 0 plus beta 1 x i. Okay, see this part, this part equal to that, which we are showing in here. This entire part equal to this part is coming from there. Okay. Now I can write from there, from there now I can write i goes 1 to n, then I can write here e to the power beta 0, beta 1 x i to the power y i, and then finally it could be written uh, 1 over 
e to the power beta 0 plus beta 1 xi. Okay. These are the things. Now take log. Now take log likelihood. So previously it was likelihood, now log likelihood. So log likelihood equal to what? Beta zero, beta one. If I take the log in there, what I have? Log make multiplication as addition, right? So log of a b is written as log of a plus log of b, right? So it has become multiplication and I have i goes on to an y i and then because of this log and natural e, it will be canceled out. I have beta zero plus beta one x i minus um, there is a minus because now log will be in there sum i goes one to n log of one plus e to the power beta zero plus beta one x i okay now you have to derive it first order and second order derivative. Beta zero, beta one. If you do this with respect to del of beta zero, then you are getting here sum of yi minus n i goes one to n one plus e to the power beta zero plus beta 1 xi and then you have e to the power beta 0 plus beta 1 xi. With respect to beta 0 when you differentiate you got this. Now if you differentiate this with respect to beta 1 then what I have y i y i x i. Now this equation should be differentiated with respect to beta 1. We are getting y i x i minus x i minus x i and then Um, y i x i beta one is gone, okay, and then that one if I want to do, okay, that one is should be done. It should have x i times. This one is coming down one plus e to the power beta zero plus beta one x i. Then if we differentiated that, then beta zero plus beta 1 xi, then if that part, we will have this. These are the two equations, okay? So now I can write this equation as, I can write this equation sum of yi minus phi xi. Because this is equal to that. And that summation equal to these two summation. Okay. So what I have, I have a cleaner equation. And then I have in here yi xi minus xi that is equal to phi xi. Phi xi. So now our equation one, I have first equation del beta 0, beta 1, del beta 0 equal to cleaner 
equation is this i goes on to n y i phi x i and then i have another equation del l beta 0 beta 1 del beta 1 sum and i goes on to n y i x i minus x i phi x i understand These are the two equations. Are you okay? Are you understanding? My purpose is what? Are you seeing how Y comes now? Are you seeing how Y comes? Our purpose is, hey, professor, why are you using your Y? Zero and one, zero and one. That was your question, right? So zero and one, Y is coming there, X is coming there. I, I was given only X and Y. From there, now my purpose is to estimate beta zero and beta one. Okay? This entire part, this, this entire part equal to this, this. This entire part equal to this. Okay? So I have now these two equations. Now tell me, in these two equations, can I get a analytical solutions? What do you mean by analytical solutions or mathematical solutions? I have given you a function and ask you to find the minimum or maximum. I have given you a function, ask you to solve this equation. A linear equation or system of linear equation, if I give you, you can mathematically or analytically solve it, right? Is these equations are analytically solvable? No, right? There is no other way you can solve it very beautifully. Understand? Like, suppose I want to ask you solve this. 3x plus 5 equal to 0. How can you solve it analytically? x equal to minus 5 over 3, right? Right, right? <laughs> this is the very simple linear equations you can solve. But can you solve this equation? My purpose by using this equation and that equations to get beta zero and beta one, understand? I have what? X and Y. X and Y is in my hand. X and Y is in my hand. By using X and Y, I want to solve beta zero and beta one. So now the solution is called numerical solution. Remember my word, numerical solution, numerical solutions, okay? Numerical solution can be obtained, numerical solutions can be obtained by Newton, Newton, Repson method. Okay. So what should I do? So there are two unknowns. As you see in here, there are two unknowns, beta zero and beta one, which I want to find, okay? Which I want to find. Which I want to find. So, as I mentioned to you, a step to estimate beta zero and beta one. Steps to estimate beta zero and beta one, okay? So number one, input initial estimated value of beta zero, input initial estimated 
value of beta zero. Let me see the, this is beta zero, zero, first case, and beta one, zero, first case. So we have to, we have to impute these things initially. So see, there is a beta zero and beta one, right? So I put here beta zero and zero, initial case, this is, this is beta one and zero, initial case. And then after putting that, number two, k plus one iteration value is obtained by k plus one iteration value is obtained k plus 1 beta k i b k u v k okay this is nothing but that one fx over f prime x you remember that right this is nothing but they have written like that way so newton epsilon method if you take a look at their that is the newton epsilon method right so this part and that part is actually these two these two okay and this is the initial guess beta 0 and beta 1 initial guess k guess is like now we have, I want to I want to show you how to compute these two things. So these two things is computed u beta u beta could be computed like del l beta divided by del beta zero another one is del l beta which is the log likelihood divided by del beta one in that way you will get this equation which i already mentioned phi x i the second one is y i x i minus x i phi x i now what is i beta i avoided here suffix this is k iterations i am just doing the first iterations this is what we already did in here these two things i already did in here this is nothing but this one and that one let me take the black pen okay these two things this one and that one are in there are in there this one is that one now why you need this one del square l beta so you i can put here i did not put here beta zero and beta one just del l beta and then uh, del beta zero square and here del square l beta zero beta one so just like the beta just like the beta divided by del beta zero del beta one similarly in here del square l just put the beta del beta zero del beta one and that one is del square l beta and del beta one square that is what Okay, I want to ask you a question. Our original solution is x n plus one equal to x n minus f of x over 
f prime x. This is the solution, right? Newton Epson method. Please take a look at the board. If you come to the class and do not want to do not want to understand these things, even in the classroom, if you use your cell phone, then it will be your at home, you will see that. That means double time you are wasting. Okay. Double time you are wasting. If you come to the class, if you put attention, then you can save time at your home, right? At the end, at the end of the day, American president, as well as the top scientist, Elon Musk, everybody got 168 hours per week. It is fixed. 168 hours per week fixed. Okay? Mm -hmm. So if you come to the class, do not pay attention, and then go read again all of these things, that means this is just a waste of time. Okay? And also it is a direct disrespect to the professor. Now the question is that, that is the solution, right? X, X plus one equal to X and minus FX over F prime X, fast derivative, right? Fast derivative, right? My question is, this is the newton Repson method solution. Functional value divided by first derivative value for a specific x0 values. Suppose this is x0, suppose x0, x0. But why did I find a second derivative? Do you understand the question? So this part and that part are is in here and here, right? So this one, I, I B1 would be the denominator and then U B1 is the numerator. Original function is this. Original function is X n plus one equal to X n minus F of X n divided by F prime of X n. Understand? Here is just fast derivative. In my formula that I wrote it in there, this is IB, this is that, okay? This is first derivative, that is second derivative. But my original one is just the function and first derivative. Why now my numerator is the first derivative and the denominator which is equal to this, numerator is first derivative and denominator is in the second derivative. Do you understand the question? Original one, just the functional value and first derivative. Now I have first derivative divided by second derivative. Anyone has any answer? The answer is now my original function, now my original function is this one. I want to solve this one. I want to solve this one, which itself is a derivative. I want to solve a derivative of a function. That's the reason. Understand? If I ask you in a like a conceptual question, listen, if I ask you conceptual question, newton Raphson method does not involve second derivative for iterative solutions of the beta zero and beta one. newton Raphson method does not involve second derivative for the iterative solutions for equations. Why do we use first derivative and second derivative, first derivative and second derivative for the iterative solutions for the logistic regressions parameter? The answer is first derivative, first derivative, that one, first derivative is that one, which is in there, first derivative is this one, which is in there, we want to solve this part. That is why we have to have a second derivative of this one. Understand, right? I hope you understand this part. Okay, so now, 
this part and that part is together if you plug now you have the solutions of beta k plus 1 equal to beta k minus i b this is like that and u b k okay that is the way solution has been done okay so now i will i i will now discuss i will now discuss about computational part okay so you can take maybe 10 10 minutes 10 10 to 15 minutes break i will also have my uh, dinner so let me let me stop in here pause Okay, I have started recording the class. Okay. Okay. So let me open the homework and then I will, I want to discuss what happened. So I'm going to show you what, are you seeing uh, from one set of, this is what I'm going to discuss. Um, show the graphs, show the graph similar to the one shown in the class for predictive probability corresponding to five categories of the ranking variable, okay? Take a look what I want to show you. This is the documents I have provided. In this document, are you seeing these type of things? Rank one, two, three, four, right? This graph has been created, right? So this is this is the type of graph you have to create for your homework problem one e. Okay, one E. Understand, right? Show the graph similar to the one shown in the class for the predictive probability corresponding to the five categories of the ranking variable. This is exactly I want like this type of things. Clear, right? Okay, now let me open the R. After opening R, let me open, open script. <clears throat> this is what I have. Uh, let me go. Window style horizontally. Now I have to. <clears throat> Go there, expense, properties, like this, copy. I want to paste it in there, control V, and have to change it to Eight D one. This is the data. I think edit ZUI preference console size. I want to make it to fourteen. Apply now. It is bigger. Upgrade and spending. 
I have a data that data has a name D1. D1 data very simple. D1 data has two variables. One is beta zero. Sorry, one is upgrade, another one is spending. Would you please stop your computer? Stop your computer. Take a look what I am telling you. I'm saying you these things because if you listen to conceptional exam, you can win. That will ultimately determine your grade. And watch my videos again and again. Very simple example, upgrade, okay? A credit card company wants to some of their customers or customers from other credit card company user to upgrade. Upgrade means what? They want to give them maybe 2% cashback or 3% cashback in exchange of a small yearly fee, hundred dollars. They want to reach to the American people, but they should not reach to the all American people. They should reach maybe 10 million people or maybe 1 million people. Even 10 million people, they will reach. That means with all the posting cost, printing cost, mailing cost, all of these things, will cost them maybe $50 million or maybe $30 million, right? They want to advertise, but they want to advertise in a very proficient way so that they can also. So they have a data from previous years. So they have this thing, spending, right? Spending, upgrade zero and one. Last year, they have spending like this. They are saying from this data, one means upgrade. Take a look at this. <clears throat> Let me write in this format, edit, 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 D1. Now take a look at that. Corresponding to one, they have a higher expenses, right? Higher, on the other end, zero has a lower expenses, right? So we want to fit the model on this data. I want to predict the probability. If prediction probability is greater than 0.05, then if we can find the cut of value from this spending, we can say that, well, our spending, if yearly spending is $40,000, then find those people who we want to mail the advertisement offer to only these people. You understand how real life example is connected with this predictive probability. So this is the data. In this data, we fit the logistic regression model. GLN upgrade is the dependent variable, which is zero and one, and spending in the independent variable, data is D1, family is binomial. Okay? So binomial is a special Bernoulli, sum of Bernoulli is a binomial. Okay. So now I want to fee, I want to take a look at the summary. This is the summary statistics. My beta zero equal to negative 5.61 and beta uh, one equal to 0.14. Clear, right? Now I want to predict the probability of a particular person. Okay. What is the pen? Now. <clears throat> This is my P, right? P is equal to one over one plus e to the power minus beta zero plus beta one xi, right? One plus e to the power minus beta zero equal to what? Negative 5.61, right? Let me also negative 5.61, one plus negative 5.61 plus 0 0.1471, 0 
seven one times. Suppose I want to pick a data expenditure. Suppose I want to take a expenditure. Suppose this one I want to take fifty two seven seven one three. Are you seeing fifty two? Fifty two seven seven one three. Okay, I want to take this. Fifty two seven seven one three. Okay. Now we want to predict these things. In order to predict these things, now one over um, one plus exp minus negative 5.5.61 5 Okay, so <clears throat> I want to consider that another negative 5.61 plus plus 0 0.147 0 0.147 times 52 point 52 point 52.7713 7713 what happened Point eight nine, right? Point eight nine, right? So that means the person whose previous yearly expense fifty two thousand, he has upgraded, right? Point point eight nine one. <clears throat> so take a look at the data. Five two seven seven. So that means zero. So he did not upgrade, right? So then this is what? This is misclassification, right? Hmm? Understand this is misclassification. But his probability is very high, right? You you, you didn't you did not get it? Okay. So, this is the probability formula, right? Like you remember, I, I wrote the probability formula in here. Unfortunately, I deleted it. I don't know why. <clears throat> you remember, we, 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 we write here P equal to P equal to 1 over 1 plus e to the power minus Z. This is like P, right? So by all mathematics, I have shown you how to estimate beta zero and beta one, right? So now beta zero and beta one value is put in there. And then this value, 52,000 has been put there. I computed their predicted probability. Predicted probability came as what? 0.89, right? 0.89 is greater than 0.5, right? 0.89 is close to one. 1 means upgrade, 0 means no upgrade, right? So my predicted probability is 0 0.89, but corresponding upgrade status is no, that means 0. So that means misclassification. Chinidu, are you okay? You understand, right? 
Didn't I tell you logistic regression does how many things? One is seeing the covariate effect. Another one is predicting probability. One is they are doing covariate effect. In terms of odds issue, another one is predicting probability classifying classification. Okay. So when I run these things model, I run this one, summary statistics, I got my beta zero and beta one. And how beta zero and beta one are estimated? By using Newton Epson method, all of these estimation procedure, mathematical derivation, I have shown you. So that 10, 15, 20 years later, you will at least, you will tell some people, yes, our professor at least show you how this come into an existence. Okay. Now you are seeing running the code, code giving you beta zero and beta one. Understand? Code is giving you beta zero and beta. And there is a probability function. I am plugging the value and getting the predictive probability. And I want to see whether this is getting the result. Now, change another one. Suppose there is another one. Uh, 52 is not working. Let me see if there is another one. Are you seeing 53? Six, 52 and 53 is very close, right? Now see 53.6063, right? 53.6063. Right? Nine zero close to. So that means the this guy upgraded last year. Now we can find this. So you will go over the data. We will see which one is the cut of value. Now take a look. Fifty three. Are you seeing eleven? Corresponding to eleven fifty three into one. This is accuracy correct classification right now for all of this data i want to see a classification matrix known as the confusion matrix okay so now this is what i run just p data so this is the output from my login this is the new data as a d1 i just put here new data but this is the original data d1 Okay, this is the original data D1 and type is response. Original data, but I am picking only the response. In that way, I am finding predictive probability. If you hit in there, all predictive probability is given. The pro predictive probability that I compute in by using God given hand, this is computer is giving. So if you write in here, P data, this is your all probability. Okay, now this probability. I want to match with whether it is greater than 0 0.5 or less than 0 0.5. If greater than 0 0.5, this is one, less than 0 0.5, this is. And then with this zero and one, I want to match with the original zero and one. See, I am, this is all probability lies between zero and one. From this zero and one, I, from this probability that lies between zero and one i am going to create a zero and one matrix okay from this probability i want to create a zero and one matrix based on whether this probability less than 0 0.5 or greater than 0 0.5 and then i will match with these predictive zero and one with the original zero and one in order to see correct classification and misclassification that is what known as the confusion matrix okay so now take a look at that 
First one, predictive probability is 0.29, right? Peter. So that is correct classification zero, right? Second one is 0.36, mixed classification, right? Third one is 0.0, that is correct classification. Correct, 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 correct. Then again, up until eight, correct. Nine is wrong, right? Nine is wrong. That is P data. Mm. <clears throat> Without carrot, it will not happen. So let me install these things. Install dot. Packages carrot C A R E T Now take a look. <clears throat> Are you seeing the confusion matrix reference prediction? Reference 0 and 1 means original. Original. And prediction 0 and 1 means like that. In that way, there was originally 0. Sorry, there was seven, uh, 17 no upgrade there is nine upgrade originally originally 17 14 plus 3 equal to 17 originally there are 17 no upgrade and there was 13 upgrade right 9 plus 4 equal to 13 originally upgrade so originally there was 17 no upgrade but how many correctly classified? Originally, how many no upgrade? Originally, how many no upgrade? 17, right? How many correctly no upgrade? 14. So, the 14 is the specificity, specificity, understand? And I can ask you, are you understanding, right? Mm -hmm. If I give you this type of problem, don't fall from the heaven. <laughs> okay? Then what is sensitivity? Nine. Sensitivity is the nine, right? And how many false positive? Three, right? How many false negative? Four. Clear, right? Yes. Okay. Now take a look at that. I have given you the R code. I advise you to do the homework in Python. If you cannot, then you can use the R. Okay. But I have already given you the R code and everything. Then what did you learn? I have teach you theory, how this come into an existence, what is logistic regression, why we need logistic regressions, all of these explanations. I told you this is multiple times so that you will never forget, right? But please try to do the homework in Python. But if you cannot, then it is okay if you do the R. R means just you run the data 
code is given, you get the output and write a report. Yes, I see your hand. <laughs> yeah, I see in your that is written in terms of percentage. That is what in terms of count, in terms of percentage. Okay. If you want to do the percentage, that could also be done. Okay. So specificity, I said what? There was 17, right? 17 was what? 17 was no upgrade, right? How many correctly identified 14? 14 over 17 equal to, you will get 82. 14 over 17, you will get 82, okay? Thank you for pointing it out. So sensitivity and specificity can be expressed in terms of count as well as in terms of percentage, okay? So my, my sensitivity is 82%, okay? So positive predictive value, negative predictive value, Prevalence. Okay. Now, how can you interpret in terms of, uh, let me open the homework. So see, find the percentage of accuracy and misclassification, okay? So that means you will find here, misclassification rate or count, all of these things. You have to write each line of sentence with all of these informations in here. If you just give me the Python code, no. You have to write a report. In that way, you will understand how to explain. In industry, if you go for the work in the financial industry or biomedical industry, logistic and Cox regressions. Cox regression I'm teaching in the 500 class, but uh, if you want to learn, that one is also important. But I'm going to request my graduate director, the students who are taking this course, if they will take also 500, then what will happen? I have to create a totally new materials. In such a case, what will happen? One group of students will be deprived from the important materials. Understand, I need to teach you how to do the Cox model. Now you are learning bankruptcy, non-bankruptcy, right? Bankruptcy equal to one, non-bankruptcy equal to zero. But how can you model time to bankruptcy? You started the company, six years survived, then you become bankrupt. You started the company, 12 months you survived, then you become bankrupt. Time to bankruptcy, right? That could be done by using Cox regression model. Okay. Now see, for one set of, Take a look at that. For one set of covariate values, now I had only one covariate in my data. What was the covariate? What was the covariate? Spending, Spending is the covariate, right? Only one. But you data, you, you will be asked to take six to seven covariate. So take a look at that. In this part, I plug just only one covariate value x, right? 52,000, right? Only one value. But in this question, I said for one set of covariate values, that means the way you take your data, your data is this one. For one set of, so suppose you take return on equity, one covariate value, and then you can take investment is another covariate value. So five covariate value, you have to put here, how many axes? Five axes, right? X1, X2, X3, X4, X5. So then based on that, see, for one set of covariate values, compute the prediction probability. Based on the prediction probability, identify whether 
the classification was correctly done for that set of copyright value or not. For when I plug 52,000, our, our probability is saying upgrade, but when I take a look at the data, I said no upgrade, right? That means misclassification, right? So you have to take a set of data, that means set of covariate, and then you have to predict these things. After predicting these things, if your predictive probability is 0 0.70, and then you will match with the data. Are you understanding? Are you understanding? No? Yes or no? So you want me to explain it again, right? Okay. Are you seeing in this problem when I find the predictive probability by using this formula, in this case, I plug x equal to 52,000 and then I got the value 0 0.89, right? And then 0 0.89 is close to one, right? So that means what the this customer or, or, or the person who have 52,000 income has a higher chance of being a upgraded member, right? That is the explanation, right? But when I take a look at the data, what did I get? Misclassification, right? So what is the meaning of that? The meaning, there is a meaning for that as well. The meaning is that, okay, let, let me write it so that you can similarly write these things, okay? Let me write these things. Uh, we use one is 53k, right? That one is correctly classified. And another one I use 52k, which was not correctly classified, right? This one, our, our, our decision is one, but in the original data, it was zero. Our decision is one, original data is one, right? So how can you write an explanation for this? This is what now I'm going to write. This is the things you have to write as well. We estimated that the probability of upgrade We estimated that the probability of upgrade is 0.8987 that a credit card holder credit card holder who spend 53k last year okay in other words in In other words, 89.87% of such individual could be expected to upgrade. So the individual who has 53,000 of expenses last year, 89% of those people has a chance to go for upgrade. Understand, right? Double explanations could be given in this form. Okay, now, <clears throat> I want to open a script, week seven. Let's see, data is in <clears throat> my data. Okay. So my data, let me see whether I downloaded the my data. Uh, my data, where is my data? My data, let me download these things. 
I have downloaded this data. Now, Control V. Are you saying this graph has been created, right? You have to create a graph like that way. Okay. So homework's problem, everything was given. So now let me see. I want to discuss another thing. Confusion matrix was discussed. Now interpret the coefficients of a categorical copyright in terms of odds, odds ratio. It could be log odds or just odds. Okay. How can you explain these things? This is what now I'm going to explain. In this output, in this output, if you come in there, So you can also exponentiate the coefficient and interpret them as the odds ratio. R will do that. Here you go. So take a look at that. So here is my, are you seeing? GRE and GPA, right? GRE and GPA are the continuous covariate. And then there is a rank of the high school. GRE, GPA, rank of the high school. Rank has a four different labels. Rank one, rank two, rank three, rank four. Rank one is the reference category. Rank two, rank three, rank four as the comparing category, okay? Mm -hmm. So, how GRE and GPA are explained is mentioned in there. Sir. Just a second. Sir. Yeah. Okay, no, no, no problem. Yeah. So take a look at that. For every unit change in GRE, the log odds of admission increases by this. Understand? Log odds. Okay. Log odds increase by that. For one unit increase in GPA, log odds of being admitted to the graduate school increase by this. Okay? So this is the way you have to write your explanation. Understand? When I say it in the homework problem, interpret coefficients of a categorical copyright in terms of odds and odds ratio, you will have to do this categorical. Now, how have to do how you will have to do the categorical one? Take a look at the next one. This one. The indicator variables for the rank have a slightly different interpretation. For example, having attended an undergraduate institution with rank of two versus an institution with a rank of one. Rank of one is a reference category, which result is not given in there. In the output, there is no rank one. Are you seeing rank one is the reference category? So what did it say? Changes, changes the log odds of admissions by this log of ad ad admissions. So this is what log or odds of admissions. If you want to do the odds, just take the exponentiations of the coefficients, then it will be odds. Okay. 
so that's it next class will be same thing but for the probit model so next class could be maybe one hour 30 minutes class okay and then i will discuss neural networks and other things but keep an eye you uh, i will give you different type of problems okay each time i'm discussing here thank you very much okay i will upload these things mm -hmm. see you next week